to a brand new exciting video. I hope you guys hope the anchor are having a fantastic day. I know, I know, I know, I know. The hair is long, it's bad. It's like brownish orange in the back. I got the memo, it looks bad. Right now, I'm just waiting for the roots to grow in like a little bit more, like probably double or triple, and then I'll probably just cut it all off because this is bad. Anyways, guys, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing like, I think, maybe my first photography tutorial ever. But today I thought I'd share with you guys a really fast, quick, and easy way to do realistic Tucker, you're ruining the sound. Tucker, hi buddy, hey. This is my doggo Tucker, and this is my catto, Saki. And this is my filming setup. You guys like the trash bags for diffusion? That's the professional technique right there, Hollywood. For real though, we're gonna jump on the computer now and start talking about how to do these super cool reflections inside of Photoshop. Hope you guys enjoy, here we go. Alright guys, so I'm at the desk now and it's time to start talking about this effect. This effect is so, so useful. I cannot stress enough how useful this effect is. Through the tools that I teach you, hopefully you'll be able to take pretty much any photo and convert it into a water reflection. Depending on the photos that you can use, you can have it be a reflection into a puddle or into like a river or a lake or any sort of body of water. Alright guys, so I'm on the computer now and I'm inside of Adobe Photoshop. This is a photo I got in Central Park and as you guys can see, it's already been color graded and everything like that. I'll show you guys the original on the screen right now and then I'll show you the graded version and now after I've done all the grading and everything like that now I'm gonna start working on this reflection. The first thing I'm gonna do is select my background layer and I'm gonna hit Control J on PC or Command J on Mac and then I'm going to double click this layer and rename it base. It's always a good idea just to start off by having two separate layers of your base photo. Now that I've done that I'm actually gonna go over to my Google Chrome or whatever browser you use and I'm gonna go to a website called Pexels. This is like it says the best free stuff photos in one place. It is an amazing, amazing website for free stock photos. I'm going to go ahead and search for puddle. All these look pretty good, but we want to find something that's going to work nicely with these rocks. I think this one actually right here might do the job. And as it says over here, it says free for personal and commercial use and no attribution required. So that sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and download it drag it into my Photoshop and we'll give this a go. The dimensions are right, so I'm just gonna scale it up to match the four by five crop factor I have on the base photo. And now what I'm gonna do is just turn it off for a second. I'm gonna go down to this bottom clip, this base effect. And I'm just gonna drag it up to about, not all the way halfway, let's try about right here. We can adjust it later on if we need to. That's okay, so I hit the check mark. I'm gonna go ahead and enable this layer again. Now what I'm gonna do is go over to this little button right here and this is the mask button, add layer mask. If you select that, you'll see this white box right here pop up. Essentially, this white box represents an alpha channel. If you've done any work with keying out colors or anything like that with green screens, then you know that white represents what is visible in the actual photo and black is what you've gotten rid of. That's how it works in the alpha channel and that's how it works in Photoshop. So right now, this rectangle is completely white, meaning that this entire photo is visible. So I'm gonna go over to this brush tool. I'm gonna make sure that the hardness is turned all the way down or at least to about 10%. And then we're just gonna start dragging back and forth and as you guys can see part of this rectangle is becoming black meaning that it is no longer visible so we're going to keep doing this keep going we don't want to see any of that until right down here and this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky because we're going to try to take this gray cobble path and sort of blend it together with the rock that i'm standing on and sort of just stroking it away something like that. that looks pretty good. And now I can go ahead and go down to this layer. If I hit Control T on my keyboard or Command T on Mac, that brings up our movement abilities and we can just drag this down. We'll drag it down to about right there. And as you guys can see, that looks really, really solid. This path is sort of just blending together with the rocks. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and duplicate this base layer by hitting Control J on PC or Command J on Mac. If we hit Control T again, it's gonna bring up our transform tools. We can right click on this image and hit flip vertical. Now all I have to do is just drag it down. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off for a second and we're gonna go over to our pen tool, this little tool right here, and drag a mask around the edges of this puddle. Something like that looks perfect. We'll hit control enter on PC or command enter on Mac and that's gonna finish the mask and bring up these marching ants or at least that's what they're referred to in Photoshop and that's just essentially a selection. We can re-enable this layer and then go back down to this add layer mask button, select that. And now as you guys can see, the reflection has been added. All right, cool, so now we're looking really good now. Next thing we're gonna do is go down to this base copy or we'll rename this layer reflection, because that's what it is. We select this main part of the layer, make sure the mask isn't selected, it's the main part of the layer. Go over to filter, blur, 
Gaussian blur. And we're gonna bring it to about 1.7. It really depends on the individual picture, but just to introduce a little bit of blur, hit okay. So here's the before photo, here is the after photo. I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks pretty solid. And yeah, it looks really, really cool. You definitely don't wanna overuse this because it's really easy just to slap this on to like every single photo you take. Don't be that guy, you don't wanna do that. It will get boring, so just use it sparingly, but every time you do use it, it's gonna look really sick. Whoa, was that not sick or what? And that is the tutorial guys. That is how to do these water reflections inside of After Effects. No, not After Effects. I'm so used to saying After Effects because that's what most of my tutorials are on. No, Photoshop. It was super fun and just sort of refreshing to do a tutorial on photography instead of video. If you guys want to see more videos or tutorials in Photoshop or Lightroom or just photos in general, let me know in the comments down below because I'd really appreciate your feedback. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys on Monday. Peace.